So then guys, it's a battle of the CPUs and a battle of the mini PCs today. We have got two big powerhouses here and both of them can pack a punch even though they are small inside. On one side, I have got the HP Z2 Mini G1A running the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus Pro 395 with 64 gigabytes of RAM and also a two terabyte SSD and Radeon 8060S graphics. All of this for just under $2,300. This is one of the most powerful mobile chips out there made by AMD right now. And then on the other side is my own personal Mac Mini with an M4 Pro. And this has been upgraded to the full fat M4 Pro, I like to say, the 14 core CPU, the 20 core GPU, 48 gigabytes of unified RAM inside of it, and a one terabyte SSD, and this costs just under 2,200 US dollars. And that is why I want to do this comparison today because with my spec'd up Mac mini here with all those extra bits inside of it, you know, like a reasonable one terabyte storage, 48 gigabytes of RAM, and also that 14 core CPU and 20 core GPU, I wanna compare it to one of the best kind of AMD chips out there, mobile chips out there right now inside of this also small factor device made by HP. Now, both of these devices call themselves Mini in their titles, but they're taking very different paths here. The Mac Mini is much smaller and lighter. A clean block of aluminum, or well, aluminium, depends where you're in the world, that disappears on your desk. Whereas the Z2 Mini is chunkier and heavier, but you can easily open up to upgrade the storage or memory, RAM, whatever, later on. And as it were, Apple locks everything up inside of it. So you have to spec it out exactly how you want it on day one, and then that's it. That's all you're left with. Whereas HP leaves the door open. That's what I would say there. But moving on though, let's talk a little bit more about the Z2 Mini. Now it is built like a workstation. Inside it sits that AMD 16 core CPU Ryzen AI Max Plus Pro 395, up to 5.1 gigahertz, combining CPU, GPU, and a built-in AI engine on one chip. The Radeon 8060S iGPU performs near to a laptop equivalent of the NVIDIA RTX 4070. And this is really impressive, because at the end of the day, that is a dedicated graphics card on a motherboard inside of a laptop. This is all built into one chip here. And in fact, you can actually put in even more RAM, like as I've got 64, but you can push this up to 128 gigabytes of that. And then what you can do is you can allocate as much of that RAM as you want to the actual actual graphics, what is really, really amazing. Now, HP does say this is compact. Whether I would say that's compact compared to say a Mac mini, I'd probably say no, but it's not huge, is it, at the end of the day for what it is. It is still quite a good size, and it's also got quite a lot of ports and things like this that we'll talk about later on. And especially you can also update and customize this a little bit more, what's also really, really good. And also just before you can ask the question, yes, the power supply is also built into this. It does not have a brick power supply separated for it. It's actually all built inside of this. But one thing I would say I've noticed that even sitting on the desktop, it does actually turn on the fans under even a little bit of load. And especially if you push it out, then obviously, yeah, it will get a bit louder. But then the Mac Mini with the M4 Pro is the complete opposite, what I would say here. It has got silent, even if you put it under load, you can just about hear the fan, but you only have a 14 core CPU, and also you've got that 20 core GPU inside of this, and we've got 48 gigabytes of unified RAM inside of this. Now, you could plus that up even more, but it will make it even more expensive, but overall, it is still super fast with this M4 Pro inside of it. It's super fast. It's around about 30% faster than the M3 Pro, its predecessor. And yet it uses less power than that device. What is absolutely crazy. And because of that, then the fans don't really whir up whatsoever, even under load, like I said, what is great. 
So I would say this, for CPU work, the Z2 Mini loves multi-threaded jobs, and it's really, really great. It's great with 3D render simulations, AI training, and also that you can customize it and push it out like that. Whereas I would also say the Mac Mini though is better with say single core speed and overall fluidity and perfect for editing, coding, and also for just general creative work out there. Now I could just keep on spewing off saying how powerful and how more silent each device is, but what does it actually look like when you actually use it? Well, let's say if you were say using Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve, you these devices are both super fast. The Mac Mini M4 Pro can export a 10 minute 4K Hevec video in about two minutes, thanks to Apple's dedicated media engines inside of this. Whereas the Z2 Mini takes roughly about two and a half minutes to do that exact same kind of export, where it's using the CPU threads and also the GPU to do this. So it's a different approach altogether, but both of them are very, very capable here. So straight away, I would just say just on the surface of this that for creative kind of work, well, the Mac Mini does do a good job here. But what about gaming? What happens here? Well, I tested out Cyberpunk 2077 because this now runs natively on Mac OS and obviously it runs on Windows, of course. So let's have a look at the results that we got here. So with the Mac Mini at about 1080p and also designed for this Mac kind of preset with no ray tracing, you get about 69 frames per second, dropping only slightly with heavier tasks. I didn't really see it go lower than 60 on the benchmark test. Whereas on the Z2 Mini with that 8060S, it delivers around about 85 frames per second and can drop down to about 75 on its lows at 1080p. And that is also on a high kind of set setting right now. Remember that is, I would say, more graphic intense than say made for this Mac kind of setting. What's also been made, you know, out by the cyberpunk kind of guys out there, what they did that when they moved it over to uh, Mac OS. So I'd even say, even when I was running the benchmark, what was getting on the actual HP machine on the Z2 Mini, it did look clearer there as well. Definitely the textures were higher than what I got with the Mac Mini, and yet it still was way outperforming here. But one thing I would also say that I did also notice is that the HP was whirring away with its fans, you know, doing that. Whereas the Mac Mini, you could just about hear the fan. It was on, but it wasn't making a huge loud noise. And I think straight away, you can make the conclusion there then that for gaming, yep, still stick with Windows all the way. And also that if you want to go with creative bits and pieces, the Mac Mini is definitely a better choice here. But it's good to know that they can kind of do the opposites of each other too. Like I said, the Mac Mini wasn't that far behind the HP in gaming and then vice versa here that obviously when exporting a video it wasn't that far behind the Mac Mini where the Mac Mini was out in front there so that is quite interesting but then moving on then to connectivity with the Z2 Mini it means business with connectivity you get loads here you can cook up to four monitors via display 2.1 and HDMI 2.1s there's plenty of USB A and Ethernet ports and also USB-C here with also the likes of say Thunderbolt 4 capability and USB 4. It's a proper workstation. The Mac Mini though can only handle up to three displays and two of them are over Thunderbolt and one of them is over HDMI 2.1. You do get a load of USB-C ports with this and also you get Thunderbolt 5 capability and also you can also upgrade say the Ethernet port up to 10 gigabits here. But I would say overall, I think the HP is better on ports wise than what you're getting. But again, same sort of situation. If you don't need that many ports, the Mac mini might be more than enough for you. You can always connect up a dock or something like that too because obviously with that Thunderbolt capability, it can definitely handle that with you multi-chaining other device into it. But then after this then for power draw, do remember that both of these chips are classed as I would say mobile chips out there. And the Z2 Mini can pull close up to 200 watts when pushed here. And like I said, those fans were up and you can hear it with it. Whereas the Mac Mini rarely passes say 60 watts, even under full load. So it's really quiet with its fans. So efficiencies here, you know, nothing can still beat out Apple here with that. What is really Really amazing to see here. And after doing some more testing with these devices, I like both of them. That is what I'm going to say here. Like I said before, you know, if you are going to do more kind of that 3D intense kind of pushing, um, you know, and things like that, if you're going to do gaming or even run kind of simulations and AI tasks, 
I would personally even say that this is probably the better device for that, the HP. Whereas the Mac Mini, you know, it can do all of those tasks. Don't get me wrong, it can do graphics intense, it can do AI bits, it's more than capable of it. But I would say if you're more of a creator out there, you can do Photoshop, video editing, and you maybe even want to do a bit of gaming just on the side, then this is still a great device out there. Both look great on your desk, just that I would say is that they just both have a very different approach in who they're actually aimed at. But it was very interesting, I would say today, to actually see what the differences were between AMD's main chip, mobile chip, and also one of Apple's major chips, the M4 Pro, and actually buying two devices that are around about exactly the same price, about $100 in between it, to see what we actually get there in difference. But on that note as well, guys, though, it's also time to wrap up this video too. What do you think of these two devices? Do you think the HP is a great device? And do you think the Mac Mini is a great device? And which one would be better for your needs? Well, let me know in the comments below. And with that as well, guys, it's time to wrap up the video too. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. And as always, if you want to hear the latest Apple news reviews and comparisons, make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.